It's 90.3 FM KEXP and online at KEXP.org. My name is Morgan, down in the live room with one of our very favorite bands here at KEXP, Not A Surf. Welcome, everybody. Thank you. Yeah, hi. Thank and you. if you would have told me 15 years ago that I'd be in this room with you now playing the entire album, Let Go, all the way through, I would have lost my mind. So I'm very excited to be here today. We're so happy that you're here celebrating the 15th anniversary of Let Go, and we would love to hear it. Right on, right on. Okay, well, let's, let's try, try to play it. Here we go. First song is called Blizzard of 77. <laughs> The cars were just lumps on the snow And then later, tripping in 7-Eleven The shells were stretching out of control On a plane ride The more it shakes, the more I have to let go Now the signals still getting all mixed up We're always doing damage control but in the middle of the night, I worry It's blurry even without light In the middle of the night, I worry It's blurry even without light I, I, I know I have got a negative edge That's why I sharpen all the others a lot It's like flowers a ladybug's pretty weeds A red beetles with dots But in the middle of the night I worry It's blurry even without light In the middle of the night I worry It's blurry even without light I, I, I miss you more than I knew I miss you more than I knew I miss you more than I knew Flashback. 80s yeah. style. I like it. I feel it. I feel it. Okay. All right. Through the magic of whatever, we're all of a sudden in tune, and we're good to go. With the heart of an old foe Drowning in my ear Always hungry like an old joke No matter who I hang out with I can feel the clock plug Of the chains I pull The cars of the roller coaster Mountain tops so high When it comes down It shoots back up Straight back to the sky I got a laugh and then I'm asleep And then I walk around and wanna cry I would like to do the strand The little candles make the bottles go Got it all over my right hand Getting crushes with no chance to grow It's like I'll never ever Always too much sun or too much snow I get slow days, no days I get rusty and it's hard But I get notions, oceans Are coming to my car Look 
Turn the, the uh, that guitar thing that he's playing. Could you turn that down a bit? <laughs> it's not a surf live on KEXP, celebrating the 15th anniversary of the album Let Go, playing the entire album live here on KEXP. Just a little bumper. <laughs> Bumpers are us. Yeah, it's my new business name. Backwards R. Now that Toys R Us is defunct, I can take the backwards R. It's all yours. Yeah. It's open field. <laughs> I really love Radio Shack and don't ever want them to go away, but mm-hmm. that's the best band name. It is the best band name. They're not quite out of business yet. They're close. They've been talking about it like 10 years. They're like, it's gonna, next year they'll be gone. Yeah. So they are. Where am I going to get batteries? I, it's such a great place. I know. It is very slice of the 80s, 90s. It never really changes. I was growing up, I mean, a long time ago, a lot more of the small thing, I, the, the small items were on display. Yeah. You know, it was like I can tell you, I can tell you that that's where the, I can tell you the Radio Shack is where this particular connector came from. <laughs> nice. It, it's driving me crazy. All right. Well, <laughs> thank you, everybody, for sharing our I love it. It's very relaxed. Yeah. It's low pressure. <laughs> that's right. All right, here we go, track three, Inside of Love. We will play presently. All right, want to give me a little, little count there? Above. 
That's a good one. That's a good one. I feel like that kind of thing. Hey, thank you so much. <laughs> You know what I remember the most about Radio Shack? I'm still thinking about Radio Shack. Yeah. <laughs> they, had a, they had this little yellow robot toy that if you put a coin in its hand and push it down, it would, uh, yeah. it would open its mouth and eat the coin. Right. It was a piggy bank. Piggy bank. And I, ha I had that, and it was Radio Shack brand piggy, ba uh, piggy bank. That's what I remember the most about Radio Shack. Yeah. <laughs> I used to go and buy replacement speakers when I couldn't, find, when I couldn't like, afford an actual speaker. Right. I would buy one of those, yeah. knowing full well they wouldn't last more than a week. Yeah. <laughs> it's good for disposable stuff, I suppose. <laughs> it's not the best tagline. Um, okay. Radio Shack smelled good, too. just want to say that. Hmm. Yeah, really? I think that's right. Per particular plastics. Yeah, yeah, it had that smell. Kind of like libraries yeah. have that book smell. Mm -hmm. Radio Shack had that radio smell. <laughs> that shack smell. The radio, the radio smell, that's another good name. Yeah. All right, on track four, we could uh, perform presently. Rolling, rolling. All right. Some food wrapped up in a plastic bag on the kitchen table. Way too long. I sat down to eat next to the bag. I was too tired. Throw it out. I saw a swarm of fruit flies. I took the back downstairs. When I came back, they were still there. Flying jerky patterns like snowflakes in the air. I'm sorry. Got nowhere to go. I'm sorry. You've got nowhere to go.
It's Not A Surf Live on KEXP, celebrating the 15th anniversary of the album Let Go by playing the entire album all the way through. And a new covers album called Standing at the Gates, the song Songs of Not A Surf's Let Go is available now, all proceeds of which go to benefit the ACLU and Pavlov Foundation. Very, very cool. Feeling good? <clears throat> Song number five. gonna drown Everyone else rushing round I've got blonde Oh uh-huh. 
High Speed Solo, here we go.
across the trail We'll go on vacation tonight Under a sun of neon light And I almost love this time When I'm by your side Not a Surf live on KEXP, playing the entire album Let Go all the way through, celebrating the 15th anniversary of the album's release. That is my favorite song on the record. Oh, I love that one so much. I had that record on repeat, but then that song, I'd get to track seven, and I'd have to repeat that song for a while before I can move on. <laughs> Yours is track five. Nice. 
What's everybody's favorite track? <laughs> Five, we got two blonde and blondes. most fun one to drum? Oh, yeah. Yeah. Is that, like, that's why it's your favorite? <laughs> As uh, Dave Grohl says. <laughs> <laughs> that's the technical term. Yeah, yeah. Mm -hmm. mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. <laughs> Daniel, is today your birthday? Uh, no. 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 Oh. It's tomorrow. It's tomorrow. <laughs> nice. It'll be at midnight. I think we're going to start with the celebrations around midnight. Awesome. What are you going to do at midnight? I don't normally play on my birthday, ever. Oh, really? Yeah. Is that a hard and fast rule? Like you take it well, off? Well, it was until we played in Dublin. The other way, the only, the first time we played in Dublin, the only, the only way we could pull it off is if I had, if I played on my birthday. So oh. I did, but I didn't go to sound check. Ah. Oh. So I had that thing going for me. Nice. How did the show go? Oh, it was awesome. Good. I gave my bass away, <laughs> threw it in the audience and left. Really? Yeah. Whoa. It was, you know, it was during this tour, actually, during the Let Go tour. Mm -hmm. And uh, we were well on our way to doing one year and 10 months of touring. Whoa. So I was a bit like, that's enough. You were like, I'm And then we added a, West, a few West Coast shows even after that. That was supposed to be like the last thing. Yeah. But um, yeah, it was worth it, I guess. Well, I I'm, got the bass back. I'm glad it's not your birthday today so that you don't feel bad about playing for us. But, um, but happy glad birthday. It's not, glad it's not Actually, oh, God, I totally fucked that up. She said, no, it was last. Not my it was birthday, last, too, as well. It was, uh, it, it was, it was, uh, 20, it was uh, 18 days ago when we played here. Oh, at the <laughs> that's right. Duh. <laughs> Duh. <laughs> when this airs, yeah. But uh, you'll, you'll have some champagne tonight. Sorry, I don't worry. Okay. 
That sounds good.
All right. <laughs> Daniel, did I read that you and Matthew went to like a French language school together? Yeah, we both, we both lived in, well, he lived in Paris as a kid. Oh, okay. Because um, his parents took sabbaticals there. Uh, and then I, uh, my dad's, I'm, I'm a diplomat, so my dad's uh, second post when I was born was in, uh, in Belgium. So I learned, I learned to speak French, and then when we both were in New York at like age five or six, so we both went to this French school. Mm -hmm. Wow, I, so you've known and, each other your whole And lives. I love yeah. French fries, so it all worked out. Oh, man, you guys get and along so French well. And French toast. It's kind of hell. <laughs> Freedom <laughs> toast. <laughs> and French is mustard. Cra it's crazy. It's right? Yeah, yeah. Yeah. Actually, he prefers grape poupon. Oh. <laughs> Sophisticated, though. Yeah. <laughs> For the discriminating taste. Grape poupon. <laughs> <laughs>
Not a Surf live on KEXP, playing the entire album Let Go in celebration of the 15th anniversary of its release here on KEXP. Yeah. 
what's wrong? Nothing. Are you sure nothing's wrong? Yeah. But you're sad about something. Yeah. So tell me what I don't.
Not A Surf live here on KEXP, playing the entire album Let Go, celebrating the 15th anniversary. And uh, that album sounding so good all the way through here in the KEXP studios still sounds as fresh as it did when it came out back in the fall of 2002. Thank you so much for being here today. Oh, man. Well, thank you for, thanks for having us and thanks for the support over the years. Uh, I think KEXP's meant a lot to us, so, so it's really... It's always a pleasure to come back. Yeah, we love having yeah. you. And uh, it's so nice to be celebrating this album. So this was your third album, but to the general public, it felt like the second album as your, as your second album uh, right. was yeah. shelved at the time. And it, and it sort of was um, a new beginning yeah. from uh, High Low, which came out in 1996. Can you kind of set the stage of where you were at that time that you were writing the album, what was going on with you guys, and, and how the album ended up coming together? Well, we... You know, we'd been in a Daniel and I had been in a couple of bands before, and and the one we were in just before this was pretty ambitious, and you know we were in New York and trying to trying to get a record contract, and and at a certain point it wasn't fun anymore, and um, we formed this band just to have a good time, and we got jobs we liked, and you know we were feeling good and balanced in life, and everything was cool, um, but weirdly as soon as we stopped trying things started happening for us and then it then it got kind of quick and then we were really busy for a while um and then when uh when the proximity effect didn't come out um we were all of a sudden back to real life but all of a sudden with a band that might do something and so i i, I just was working in a record store and not thinking about grad school or any any next step just hanging out and so it was a long slow process of just working on music when we felt like it and it was yeah, a really nice time. And we didn't want it, to... It just felt like a jib to, to the band itself to, to put out um, a third album before we could put out the, the second one because mm. we really worked hard on it and, mm. and, and we recorded it with some really talented people uh, in Los Angeles and we just, we just felt like we owed it to our fans and, and to the band and to all the people that worked on The Proximity Effect to wait, and, and, to wait it out and, and put it out. And we did, you know. I mean, there came a point where Electro was trying so hard to atrophy the band, but they just couldn't because we just kept playing together and, and kept just writing, thinking that, you know, eventually we'll put out a third album. Yeah. yeah. Did you have sort of a, a battle with Electra during the, the recording of that second album? Uh, no, they, they were just... Kind of. Yeah. No, I mean, they, they, were, they were just paying the kind of attention and, and making the kind of statements that you don't really hear in most other situations where, like, you know, if there's no single, we're just going to be dying on the vine out there. Like, you know, the, the A&R guy would call me pretty regularly and and uh, complain. But you could tell that it was a oh, super toxic. It was a super toxic relationship anyway, because yeah. they, even though they kept saying they're like, "Yeah, we're in here for the band development," blah blah. It was all total crap. Well. They, you know, they were pushing us to put the album out as as quickly as possible. To which Matthew was like, "You know, no one's going to remember whether the album came out in February or or September. We, you know, we don't want to." we're not ready to, to record the second album, you know, which is obviously true. I mean, because we always thought about stuff in the long term. And then just lots of different things, you know, they, 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 just, they just didn't want us for who we were, and, and, and it's just none of their business. I mean, even things like, for example, they wanted us to spend a lot of money recording. And the reasoning behind that being that if they don't spend a lot of money on the band, then they were not going to work the band because they don't need to make back so much of an investment. I mean, that's just what a load of, you know, that's exactly the kind of label you don't want. It's a know? little scammy, isn't it? Yeah. yeah. So it's just cheesy. Mm -hmm. so it's sleazy. Reminds me of Trump. <laughs> things are better now. Yeah. And uh, when you started writing the songs for Let Go, did you think that you were going to be writing an album or did those songs just sort of come naturally and an album ended up coming together? Oh, I don't know. You know, I think I wasn't really thinking about it, but if you'd been there to ask me the question then, I would have said, yeah, it'll be in a record eventually. Mm -hmm. um, but we were just, uh, yeah, just doing it as it, as it came. Yeah. You know? uh, to me, I feel like the first half of the record um, feels a little nostalgic. Like mm -hmm. you, you're thinking back on things you loved when you were a kid, and then the second yeah. half of the record is, feels more like what you're going through at the time. Uh, is there an overarching theme to the record? No, uh, not not really, except that you just said it. You know, it's probably, nailed it's probably it. that. Yeah, I nailed it. <laughs> um, there was no plan about side one or side two or anything. It's That's cool that it, if it appears that way, that's great. Um, but yeah, I, you know, it's a lot of happy, sad stuff. You know, you, you look back wistfully, you look forward hopefully, and, and um, try not to get too 
too hung up on things. But but not getting hung up on things is like a, a life uh, endeavor, you know. Yeah, there's, de- there's definitely so. th- that to it. I mean, we were we were in such a vacuum. We didn't we didn't have to answer to anybody. Um, and we were gonna, you know, make this album pretty much on our own. Ex- I mean, with the help of our of our producers, but but just without a record label, and, you know, no manager to answer to, nobody except to thinking about our fans that you know eventually might hear it, and just making ourselves happy. We it was kind of we were very free, you know. Mm-hmm. You had mentioned um, after playing Blonde on Blonde earlier that that was the first time you had played all the way through was the recording. Yeah. Did you do that with a lot of songs on the on the record? No, no, we we. We practiced a lot. Yeah. Yeah, I think yeah. The, the opposite of that one, I think, would be Inside of Love, which we did in maybe like five or six different ways. And we were, we were down in Venice Beach recording, and, and the people, the, these kids from, from the, the Los Angeles Film School um, wanted desperately to do a video for that song. And so that was the first one we had to, you know, really get together because we, you know, they had to start working on it, or they were ready. They had a script. They had, they had all the production was ready, and they, we were we just kept changing the song, playing it one way and then the other. <laughs> but uh, yeah. So it was like a forced single because of that, because of the video. Kind of deadlines are good, right? I mean, it was yeah. just a, it was a healthy. Yeah, uh, bit we of certainly didn't have the money to do any other video. I mean, they paid for everything, including the rapping party. Yeah. And I cooked, but I mean, <laughs> that was nice of you. Yeah. <laughs> so you ended up going with Barsuk mm-hmm. um, for the U.S. release back in 2002 for Let Go, and yeah. they were a fairly new label at the time, of course, based here yeah. in Seattle. Um, and they're celebrating their 20th anniversary yeah. this year. Amazing. You're celebrating 15 for Let Go, yeah. so you sort of came up together. How did you end up working with Barsuk? Well, the first th- they were first on my radar because I'd heard of Death Cab for Cutie, and I went to see them. Um, at Brownies in New York, and I bought uh, a CD. And it's such a tiny thing to say, but I, I really like the cover design, and I like the I like the Barsoup logo, and I like the the font that was on the back. There was something uh, aesthetically really calling out to me. Um, and then um, uh, a lovely person here in Seattle called Barbara Mitchell, um, who I'd met uh, at Guitar World because I used to be a writer at Guitar World. And she was a publicist, and um, she sent me their way. And also, we took uh, um, Rilo Kylie out on tour, who were on Barsuk at the time. So I, I started to talk to Josh a lot, and and um, Josh Rosenfeld, the Barsuk owner, and um, you know, just a really great guy. And I got a feeling from him of, of the sort of philosophy of the label, and and just a kind, cool place where people are rational and. You know, uh, it's very welcoming, and he was very patient. You know, because we didn't know what we were gonna do, and so we were kind of hunting around. And um, he just hung in there and uh, and gave us a lot of great advice about the record. Was really like before signing us was kind of in an A and R role, you know, editorial role. Um, we just uh, we were immediately happy because the thing is, as Daniel was saying, we've had some rocky record company stuff, and but once once that's gone, and you're just with people you really like, the air is all of a sudden lighter. And, and clearer. Yeah. Um, and it's been like that ever since, so it's, it's been really a great experience. Good. Yeah, yeah. they're a very unique label. They, yeah. Like you were saying, they have a really good aesthetic visually, mm-hmm. um, but then also the roster of bands they put together. Like yeah. It all makes sense which bands are yeah. all on that label. Like yeah. You all fit together very well. Yeah. 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 It's been great. Um, so you've been touring for the past few months on Let Go, doing the entire record all the way through. Yeah. Uh, does it really bring you back to the feeling of that time, or does it feel like another life ago when you're playing this record in the order that it's meant to be heard? It's kind of dipping in and out of it. You know, we've played a lot of songs from Let Go always since that record, um, but it's pretty cool to play them in order. And it, it does, yeah, I mean... It, Brings me back to to Brooklyn and and uh, a certain period in our life, and you know, um, it was very free. Yeah. So yeah, it feels good. How did you end up coming to the conclusion that you'd be doing this tour? It was our manager's idea. I think I think all all uh, anniversary tours are managers' ideas, but it's a wonderful <laughs> case. It's, it's not a band's just not going to think of it, you yeah. know. But it's totally win-win because we love it we're really enjoying it and uh so it's a case when there's not at all you know we're not on opposite sides of a 
of a tennis court lobbing ideas back and forth. It's just a good, it was a good idea, you know? Yeah. I'm and super psyched to do it. There's a lot of interesting things that we hadn't really thought about. I mean, opening for yourself is kind of really strange. <laughs> yeah. But it's also really cool because you don't have to move anything. You know, you just leave everything right. the way it is, which is just so nice. Yeah. And then and then the first set, like, there's no surprise. You're just doing this, and it's you know the beginning, you know the end, and so is the audience. Mm -hmm. So then when we come back out and do the second set, then we're just... We try to be the opposite. Just try to throw in like stuff from left field and just, and then and it's just kind of crazy and wilder. And it's okay if you fuck it up and whatever. Yeah. So it, it's much more. I don't know. It's cool. I mean, it's never okay to screw up, but it's <laughs> but it's really a lot of fun. And and it's I think it's been really good for us. Mm -hmm. um, I mean, I had to listen to the album again and kind of relearn it because we, we, after playing it for so many years, we just played our live version, which always kept changing. Mm -hmm. And to go mm -hmm. back to the way we did it on Let Go, we had to, I mean, I literally had to like listen to it again and be like, oh, wow, really? Sure. We played it like that? Wow. So it's cool. It's definitely been really fun. Yeah. I was going to say, so you're, you're playing really long sets. You take a break mm -hmm. in between, of course, but how has it been doing those, those like three-hour-long shows every night? Yeah, it's great. You know, yeah. it's nice to take a break. Um, after that hour, we we take a twenty minute break, and that's just good for people. You don't want to stand in one place all the time. Yeah, there isn't that. A, you know, in restaurants when they have that soft flooring mm -hmm. behind the counter. We, for shins, we should get that. Yeah, yeah. yeah. <laughs> there should be that at at this show and at Springsteen shows. Mm -hmm. Yeah. <laughs> I, w I was going to ask, you uh, were working at Earwax at the time uh -huh. that you were recording this album. Yeah. I worked in record stores, and I have very vivid memories of the albums that came out during that time. Oh, yeah. What albums were you listening to at the record store? That So the first couple of White Stripes records came out, and uh, I'm not answering the question of what was I listening to, but what was uh, what was playing at what the was store? a really big deal and yeah. what people were buying constantly. It yeah. was just ridiculous. Mm -hmm. um, that, Calexico... Um, Serge Gainsbourg comic strip, I guess, maybe was a, a reissue that had come out recently. You know in High Fidelity when they play like a beta band record and, and say, check out how many copies we're going to sell? At, at Earwax, it was Serge Gainsbourg. You put that on and you just sell five of them in ten minutes. Awesome. You know? yeah. John Spencer, I think, was doing quite well. Yeah, right. Extra Width, oh, Orange, yeah, that was around then. Early, uh, that first um, Strokes First EP. Strokes EP was flying off the shelf. Mm -hmm. Oh, really is this quick. it? That e album? No. Or no, um, that came EP. out later. The EP, I can't remember what it's called. Yeah, yeah, totally. Yeah. yeah. Awesome. <laughs> Did any of those records that you were listening to at the time influence Let Go or? Well, I think we just, we just come off a period of um, listening to a lot of Elliot Smith records and we just toured with him right before, mm. um, for a week right before that. And that was just a, that was one of those bands that was like a really common big influence. Um, Chavez was always a big deal. Yeah, we're crazy about Chavez. Um, I don't know if that Granddaddy record came out right before. Oh, someday. So Software Slump. Oh, Software. Uh, I, yeah, yeah. I don't know if that was. No, that I don't know if that was concurrent. Maybe it was a bit after. I'm not that. sure. Yeah, yeah. I want to say that came out at the same time. Yeah, maybe so, yeah. around the same time. Mm -hmm. Yeah. I think someday came out in 2003. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. So that was right before that. Yeah. yeah. That's right. <laughs> for 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 um. For for let go, um, I was going berserk, playing, learning every single bass note on how it feels to be something on by Sunny Day Real oh, Estate. Oh yeah, yeah. And I think that um, Killian's Red is a d direct, right. yeah. you know, descendant of that that album. Oh man, now that you say that, I totally hear that. That's yeah. amazing. I actually just played that um, so a song from that album the other day because we're doing the sub pop count up. Have you heard mm -hmm. that we're doing that? We're playing every single catalog number <gasps> in the sub pop catalog. Awesome. And I just yeah. played a song from that album right. the other day. That's yeah, that's amazing that you just said that. Um, so to go along with the tour, you've also released uh, an album of covers mm -hmm. of the entire album of Let Go called Standing at the Gates, the songs of Not A Surf's Let Go. Tons of bands on here, Rogue Wave, Long Winters, uh, Adia Victoria, Eyelids. How did you um, end up coming up with this covers album idea? And did you pick the bands who ended up doing the covers? So um, <laughs> again, it was our manager. <laughs> and we immediately said no. He proposed doing that. And we said no because we were kind of bristling at the idea of like organizing our own um, covers album. Uh, being careful to steer away from the word tribute, you know, just felt a little right. weird to do something like that yourself. But, um, but he told us it would be charity and, and once we, you know, thought A, giving money to the ACLU seems like a great idea and Pablo, uh, who helped uh, kids with cancer. But, but then also once once it was okay to think about it, then the idea of these bands doing the songs was really exciting. We didn't pick that many of them. Um, my, my condition at first was that I didn't want to ask anybody personally. Mm -hmm. um, 
which I broke because I, I asked Amy, Amy Mann. Um, to well, do why it. wouldn't you? Yeah. It's um, Amy Mann. <laughs> but, it, but it's all been really great. The first one we heard was Ron, Ron Gallo doing Happy Kid, and I was just knocked out. It really sounds like he, like, like he wrote it. You mm -hmm. know, it's amazing. So it's been a total thrill to hear these versions. And there's another one. There's an there's a all-Spanish version. Oh, cool. Um, yeah. Is that out yet? Uh, it is out in, in Spain. Yeah. Oh, it's nice. all Spanish bands. And it's doing quite yeah. well, too. Yeah. I mean, that's that's just such a big hats off to uh, Yeah, it's exciting. I couldn't believe the bands are in it. It's like all the really awesome Spanish bands are in it. And, and it, it sort of came about because we already had all the songs covered in the States pretty much. And, and, and I know a bunch of bands were like, can we get on that? Can we get on that? And so many bands wanted to get on it. And we thought, well, why don't we... Yeah, if they want to do it, let's organize a Spanish one. And so our booking agent in in Spain, Carlos, um, organized that. And he, it, you know, it's a lot of work to put together a whole album and get all the bands, the logistics, and blah blah. But it's really amazing. A lot of the most amazing compliment is the fact that they they most bands um, translated the lyrics to Spanish, which is so difficult to do. Um, translating, we've had to translate several songs to French, and it's it ain't easy. Matthew's mom had to help us. Oh right. yeah. Right. Did you did you write La Porte Sauve by yourself? Yeah, I just we 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 did this crazy tour in in France um, where we did a whole month in France, and instead of doing it the regular way in a tour bus or whatever, we did so many so many dates. We toured more like a French band would tour, mm -hmm. which really helped us, you know, sort of make a make a, a big statement in France. Um, and and. I Maybe was so immersed in shows. France, in, yeah. in French, that, that I was just start, really starting to think in French. And, blah, 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 and I just kept, in my songbook, I kept writing these amazing French expressions. They just have the best expressions. And, and sometimes I don't even know what they mean, so I'd have to write them down. And I just had this whole collection of crazy expressions. It's like, almost like the song just wrote itself. Mm -hmm. Matthew had this great little line, and it was actually kind of on the easy side. What's your favorite French expression that doesn't translate well to English? <laughs> oh, dear, there's got to be so many. Oh, I, I have one. Okay. <laughs> Tombe dans les pommes, to fall in the apples. To fall in the apples, yeah. It means, it means to pass out. Oh, okay. Because <laughs> you drank too much cider and I right. don't know. Maybe. I had no idea where it came from. I bought Ira a book for your, was it your birthday or Christmas? It was a, a slim volume that was all oh, euf yeah. euphemisms for being drunk. Yeah, it was like, it was like 6,000 variations <laughs> it's on just like amazing. words that mean. And there's so many opposites, drunk. like being tight is being drunk, being loose is being drunk. Mm -hmm. Yeah. <laughs> in yeah. your cups. That's weird. Yeah. yeah. What's your favorite French phrase? You had one. Oh, um, well, l'esprit de l'escalier is the spirit of the stairs. Mm -hmm. And that's the thing that you think of to say after you've left the, let's say, apartment on the third floor where you were having a conflict with someone. And as you're walking down the stairs, you're like, ah, man, that's what I should have said. And that's the spirit of the stairs. Oh, yeah. Oh, wow. Yeah. And a, a pet name they use is Mon Petit Pousse, right? Is that flea, my little flea? Oh, yeah, my petit pousse. I just yeah, think yeah, that's yeah, funny to call totally. people a flea. Yeah, <laughs> yeah, yeah. <laughs> so um, 15 years later, how do you think the music industry is different now than it was when you released Let Go? And has your, um, the way that you write albums or release albums, has that changed? Um, that hasn't changed. Um, but the way things have changed, I'm, I'm not sure. I mean, so many people are probably r writing really incisive articles about what's happening, but uh, um, it's probably easier to be in a band. It's easier to find an audience and get to know them personally and add them, add fans one by one, but, um, but there are a lot more of them, so I don't know. I think it's always, it's always a good... I always think, not just in terms of playing in a band, but, but as a listener, it's always a golden age, constantly. Mm for somebody and in some way and if and if you don't consider it a golden age now maybe in a few years you'll look back and realize that it was you know i think it's always the opportunities are always there and and you can always play for somebody and that's that's a great part of it and uh and also just going to band practice is you know once you get a song right the first time and play it that's that's just about the biggest rush of all and that never goes away cool yeah Anyone else? I didn't answer a question. But. No, I love that answer. <laughs> that, yeah, you, I don't have one. that made me really think about, yeah, it's golden age for someone. Depends yeah. on what All genre you're into. Yeah. Or even uh, with reissues. Yeah. Even if the, the record doesn't hit now, it might hit later. Yeah, that's right. It might be really influential, yeah, like Serge right. Gainsbourg in, right, in the right. States, for example. Yeah. Um, and then one other thing I want to know. Are you working on a new album? Yeah. Um, that's all I got. Details? Yes. No? No details. Just working. Any, uh, okay. 
No, you no. Got no timing. All right, got no, no timing. Got no overarching Let's theme. Play. Let's play the whole thing. <laughs> <laughs> all right, all right. So all right. we're gonna play the whole thing now. <laughs> no, but just so you guys know, I just had a, I just had a, a, a three-minute talk with John Goodmanson, who wants to come to Ibiza and build a studio in my house. Oh wow! Oh, right. so go. the new record might be produced at your house, is what yeah. you're saying? And if he builds a studio, you might as well. Record it. There you go. <laughs> I'm just saying. <laughs> Not a surf. Thank you so much for being with us today. We appreciate you always coming back and playing for us. And I want to say a big thank you to the donors standing here. It is because of your support that we're able to have in studios like Not a Surf playing the entire album of Let Go. So thank you so much for your support. And keep it tuned right here to the station where the music matters. 90.3 FM, KEXP, Seattle. Awesome. Done. Yay! Oh, we're not done yet. Oh, we're not done yet. Discover new music at listenerpoweredkexp.org.